Let's party. Welcome to another edition of the New Breed Podcast, the world's best podcast dealing with the topic of new metal. I am your co-host, Jay Horsecow. With me, I have my partner in crime, the notorious TIM, Tim Anderson Jr. Tim, how's it going? Great. Are we enjoying the winter weather? I see you're wearing a hoodie. Halfway through uh, this episode, you'll be stripped down to a t-shirt and it'll be all the beer. Yeah, once the, uh, once the lights make me sweat to death, <laughs> it'll be off. <laughs> and joining us, we have another celebrity guest, a uh, member of the band Before I Had Wings, I believe, which is Boston Mass or somewhere up in New England? Massachusetts and half upstate New York, so it's like half and half. All right. Uh, Chris Wojnicki. Chris, thanks for taking the time out to join us. No problem. Thanks for having me. Although, truly and selfishly, it's not like you could be on tour right about now. So, no. we'll take it what we be, can. You're actually supposed to be uh, touring Europe like two weeks ago. Oh, <laughs> that definitely right. sucks. And you're, you're, also in, um, you're also in another band. Oh, yeah. Jay's forgetting. forgetting. Yeah, X Forgiveness Tonight. Uh, there you go. Straight Edge Band. Oh, forgiveness tonight. Yeah, I, I really like that. That last fucking CD was great. We'll get into that. Um, <laughs> so we're going to have a bit of a rambler here, folks. Um, Chris reached out and said, hey, I love new metal. And, and it's kind of weird for Tim and I because it's being old farts. It's kind of weird to have younger guys come forward and say they really grew up on this stuff. So um, we're just going to bounce around the room. We're going to talk all sorts of new metal shit. We're going to talk hardcore shit. Uh, we're going to make fun of Chris for not liking the Deftones. We're going to make fun of Tim for not liking System of a Down. Mm -hmm. um, and they're both going to make fun of me for being a Limp Biscuit fan. Like when I die, I want to come back as fucking Fred Durst. So let's get in. So uh, everybody's like, this is horrible audio, but Chris is just waving his head like, Jesus, what did I just get myself into? Um, so Chris, for people who don't know you or know your background, well, I'm going to give you a couple of uh, minutes to just introduce yourself you know the bands you've been in the bands you're currently in musical taste and then we'll go from there all right well i'm uh as you said chris uh my nickname is wojo so a lot of people will refer to me as that and um yeah so i've been in the music scene probably like i know before the band i sing in before i had wings has been around for like 10 11 years now and like forgiveness and i have been around for like maybe three now uh but like before i did all that like i was a huge new metal head in high school like i graduated in 2002 so i think i found new metal freshman year and that was like 98 so um and like ever since then i loved new metal except when i first found hardcore i definitely pulled the the bullshit thing where i thought i was better than it so when I found hardcore, I get got rid of all my new metal CDs. And, you know, I thought it was a, I was above it. I definitely had that jock hardcore mentality. Um, and I would say in the last five or six years, I've been slowly rebuying my collection. <laughs> Everybody does it. Everybody goes through that phase where they kind of disavow what they were into, and then it's like, yeah. shit, I really should have kept that fucking corn T-shirt because it's yeah. probably worth <laughs> some money right now, you know. <laughs> and like slowly, I kind of been reverting back into like just being all about new metal i still like you know uh the heavy hardcore and the beat down but i guess i'll be honest majority of the time i'm probably listening to new metal if my spotify year-end playlist is to be believed yeah me too i spent way more i apparently spotify thinks the two things i listen to most this year is slipknot volume three and ghost main so that's a whole <laughs> Whole different, whole different monster in and of itself. Um, so, Chris, when you got into new metal, right? So you're a younger guy. Um, well, younger than Tim and I, but then again, that doesn't say much. Uh, what was, what were the first bands that you remember coming across? And um, in two, well, 2002. I mean, at this point, Corn is huge, Limp Bizkit is yeah. huge, System of a Down is coming into their own. What were the first bands that you came across that you were like, shit, I'm really into this? I remember freshman year of high school. Like I said, I think it was 98 or 99. I can't remember exactly. Then how many fucking years? 20 years, maybe. Uh, I remember I was up late one night. I don't know if it was a school night or it was a weekend. I just couldn't sleep. And I turned MTV on. Back then, they used to play like all types of music videos, not, you know, not just pop. It was like, there was like metal and there was like hip hop and all that stuff. And I remember Static X Push It came up. And I never heard this type of stuff before, ever in my life. Like I used to listen to like Beastie Boys before that. So, uh, yeah, that video and that band really changed like what I started listening to. So I remember going to school and then like, I think after school, me and my buddy ran to the mall and I bought uh, Wisconsin Death Trip. 
Mm. <laughs> interesting. Think, you don't you don't <laughs> usually hear someone with Static X as the first band they get into. Interesting. Interesting. And then the second one, I don't know how um, if it was a couple months after, but then I came across Machine Head's Burning Red. I bought that CD and that CD became like my all-time favorite. Like I, I think I wore it out. I had to buy a new copy. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a but, great record man yeah and, yeah and you came into new metal at like a sweet spot i think like 98 99 was definitely a sweet spot for new metal right i mean at that point at that point you hadn't started to hit the second and third tier bands they weren't coming into their own you still had a lot of the late first tier bloomers right like a static x for example that's a late first tier as far as i'm concerned right yeah. um burning red is is towards the end of um towards the end of that first tier, first pass bands really coming into that sound, you know, and then from here it gets, it's all downhill, right? It's Primer 55 and Reveille and, you know, hey, I somewhere. love, no, I love Primer 55, so I don't even care. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> that, that first album, that first album had some tracks, man, but the, oh, that but after flawless. that I was like, nope. It was flawless. The second one had some okay tracks, but that, then they started like going downhill. Like I think their vocalist passed away or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, somebody passed away recently. Ah, yeah. oh, that's pretty wild. Static X is the as the as the intro. So let me ask you this, Chris. Um, so you come into Static X, uh, and then you start picking up some other stuff. Um, did you ever turn around and go backwards, like with some from from, from Static X? Like obviously, there's some Ministry influence, or some Nine Inch Nails influence, or some harder industrial influence. Have you ever taken your taste back that way and saying, "Hey, where does this where does this shit come from?" I've always like. <laughs> That's funny because about every kind of music I listen to, I I can't get into like the the bands that actually started it. Like I've tried it for some reason. Like older music does nothing for me except for like hardcore. Like the the first band that came across for like hardcore was Biohazard. But to be fair, they had some new metal albums. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, Montaleo is definitely a new metal yeah. album. So yep. was, that was an easy that was an easy transaction for me. But then like when I found Biohazard, I got into like Marauder and All Out War. And then I got into like my favorite kind of bands, like Full Blown Chaos, like Barrier Dead, First Blood. So, oh, we're talking. This is all fucking. This is right in my wheelhouse. This is all the fucking tough guy stuff. Where you, that's my favorite kind of. That's oh, uh, I, I listen to now. Fucking love it. Uh, well, Cover your well, tracks. Shit. Cover your tracks is a perfect tough guy album. Yeah. The first First Blood EP and the first album are perfect fucking. And those tough are the. Guy and you, if you listen to uh, my band before I had wings. You can tell those are huge influences. Mm, mm. I was just gonna say that. It's, it, you, you listen to before I had wings. It's like, yep, there's the full blown <laughs> chaos and the dudes in uh in hoodies and camo shorts, right? And the the Castro hats. That's what I think well, of. I, I wear, think I tough wear like an army hat. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm stuck in that time period. I can't help it, dude. There's nothing wrong with it. It's coming back. Shit, yeah. if new metal's coming back, next thing you know, it's gonna be Tim and I always joke. It's gonna be the uh, swoop haircuts and the white belts. Everybody wearing their sister's jeans. It's going to be dicey. <laughs> yeah, did, I don't remember if I asked you, Chris, when, when we spoke on Ill Street. Yeah. Didn't you what, You wear, like, the gloves live as well? That's for forgiveness and I, yeah. It's not okay, like, okay. It is kind of gimmicky, but, like, I felt like I needed to do something to stand out, you know. So I got the XF Construction gloves rocking every show. Nothing wrong with that, man. No, nothing. I mean, it's 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 actually part of that genre, right? Like, it's not like if you were singing like pop punk and did that, everybody would be like, what the fuck is this dude doing? Yeah, but yeah. when you show up with a couple of construction gloves with X's on it, I'm like, okay, District 9, Straight yeah. Edge. I get it. I get it. It works. Okay. I mean, I mean, the disc is called Mandatory Militants, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so it, it, it matches. It fits. Yeah. So Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Um, it just makes me think of like earth crisis and stuff, you know, there you go. Yeah. Uh, but it's, you know, speed while we're getting, getting away from new metal for a bit, tough guy is one of those things where I'm always amazed that if you think about it on its surface, it's a fairly simple type of music. Right. Mm. And yet it is notoriously difficult to do it well because there are That's bands that try to do tough guy and they yeah. butcher it. Oh man. It's like, even with new, but I think that's why I love new metal too, because it's simplistic. Like, if you think about it, it is kind of simplistic. So, like, any band, like, when it comes to, like, the tough guy or, like, the beat down kind of stuff, like, I really like simplistic stuff. Like, even, like, for both my bands, like, you feel like less is more. Oh, and absolutely. Yes. 
I think I think that's why a lot of people are drawn to new metal because it's one of them genres where you hear it and it just pulls you in and catches you right away because it's got that groove to it and it's got that, like you said, it's a, a little, but it's a lot. Right. It, it, it not only catches the ear, I mean, if you think about where tastes have gone, some of the stuff that we listened to back in the late 90s and the early aughts could easily end up on the radio today if radio was still a thing, right? right. If, the, if, the, if the record industry, the music industry – that whole thing was still around. A lot of that shit, you could see it on the radio and it wouldn't be, it really wouldn't be too far out of place. Right. Not at all. I mean, what, like Got the Life by Freak on a Leash? They, I mean, they were on the radio, right? Oh, yeah. They were but huge. Now, I mean, but if Freak it came out Leash, now. Wasn't that yeah. retired from uh, TRL? Oh, yeah. I think yeah, that was yeah, one of the yeah. few videos that they actually, re- God, how old are we? Um, that they actually retired on TRL because it was on the top for so long. The yeah. funny thing, every time I go grocery shopping, they play a filter song every time I'm in there. So, oh, I love that band. <laughs> Me too. Uh, after the the second album, when they uh, went to radio, they're, they're good. Kind of like lost me. Um, I still think one of the best songs they did is the the Jurassic Hall on the Crow Two soundtrack. Is it's fantastic. Their best record is the second one. I, I, a lot of you people think? say short. Yeah, the second one is a Metal fucking record, masterpiece. Really yeah. yeah, title I mean, of record. Title that's of a record. masterpiece. That that is probably top five records of the '90s for me. Well, and also that's where they. I, I'm not a huge fan, but that's where they came into their own sound, right? Because the first album, you could tell like he was trying to come away from his Nine Inch Nails, his time in Nine Inch Nails. So you could it, the influence was kind of not blatant, but it was it was definitely there. You can title of record. Was- he went more towards what he wanted to do. Yeah. Nowadays, he's kind of reverting back to like that electronic side. Man. Like, like like he like released like a new song not too long ago and i felt like it's definitely going towards more of short bus and like him being in nine inch nails like it doesn't remind me of title of record or any other cd whoa Did I- what's that song on title of record is it called it's gonna kill me yeah there's a song i don't know if that's in that name of it, but i know what song you're talking about. yeah it's a, yeah it's definitely in the lyrics but that song is so goddamn good the song that got me into filter was welcome to the fold so it came off that oh album. yeah 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 that's a great track as well tim i think i mentioned this to you did you watch that documentary hired guns uh no but i have it in my list so it's all about you know musical artists that get hired in to play for a band uh like they're touring like not not cover musicians but like touring guitarists for like a vocalist or like Billy Joel's backing band. There's a section where they interview Richard Patrick from Filter. And he talks about how, you know, he was, he was a hired gun for Trent Reznor and Nine Inch Nails. They were going in to write the downward spiral and Richard Patrick was frustrated because he had ideas. And yet, you know, Nine Inch Nails was Trent's thing and Trent wanted to do it all himself. So that's why Richard Patrick stepped back and, you know, did his own thing. Uh, funnily enough, if uh, if you ever see the video for, I think it's uh, Gave Up, which is the last song, I think, on Broken. Mm-hmm. I think it's Gave Up. Um, the video actually has them in the studio where they're, re- it's the studio that he bought prior to recording uh, Downward Spiral. And in the video, it playing guitar is Marilyn Manson and Richard Patrick. Oh, okay. So it's kind of kind of wild to watch that. That's the studio he bought where the Manson the murders. Manson happened. murders, yeah. Which is fucking incredible to think about, like mm-hmm. that you can record, you know, your record somewhere like that. It's got to have a weird vibe, right? Like in the room, it's got to have a kind of weird vibe. Well, the records that they recorded there all have that eerie, you know, mm-hmm. sound. So, you know. Mm-hmm. But hey, let's 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 get back to new metal. <laughs> so uh, let's do this. Since we were talking, this was a conversation earlier on Facebook. I want to get into Cold Chamber real quick because before I forget, I know I'll forget. I want to get into Cold Chamber. I, I want to know why you think people hate – hate 90% of people hate this band, and I don't, never understood why. Was it because they're too, like, simple? I well, think, just what is it? Well, um, I think it's because Dez was an asshole back then. I From what oh, I heard yeah. – I heard he was kind of an asshole. So I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but also, like, I'm sure a lot of quote-unquote normies didn't like the image. Like, the dude had a freaking nose ring that went from his nose to his ear or something like that. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. It's uh, like, I think the image, too, and it's like, their music, if you really think about it, that's as simplistic as it comes. Like, he has, he repeats his lyrics, like, almost every line, you know? So, I don't know. There's a lot of reasons, but I mean... 
I know pro- I, that's probably a good guess. Yeah, I think that's probably a good guess. I mean, probably. And to your point, Chris, the image, right? They had a very unique image, and I'll bet you, you know, there was almost a visceral reaction to that. Like, pro- I, the thing I find funny about Cold Chamber and even its Dell Driver is Des Fafara, Fafara, whatever, Parappa the Rapper, whatever his last name is. Dude is literally like five feet tall. Like that was the part where I was like. Wait a minute, how tall is this dude? I was actually, Tim, I think we've talked about this, that show that went down in, in New Jersey hardcore history, Asbury Park, right? Where the guys from Fury of Five jumped a bunch of new metal bands. That was the Seven Dust, Coal Chamber, Power Man 5000 tour. I was actually fucking there. I was inside the venue when all that shit went crazy. But another guy, Lejean from Seven Dust, he's like five feet yeah, tall. He's not a big guy. It's like yeah. these dudes, they were, they were not a... What do they have the basis from Cold Chamber? Like, was she swinging her bass around like an axe? Like, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I, I, I guess, you know, they just wanted to be the cool kids and beat up all new metal kids, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Even though new metal would turn around and be wildly, wildly financially successful, way more than, you know, you didn't see, no offense to Fury 5, but I like their music, but you didn't see them opening Ozfest, you know? It, yeah, exactly. To be fair, when I found hardcore, I definitely had that mentality, like, beat up all the new metal kids, even though I was one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was one. Well, it's it's cool that you can admit that now because a lot of people won't. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of people in hardcore who say they hate new metal, but in the car by themselves, they're they're listening to Life Is Peachy. And someone you know. told me once, if you're in the hardcore, you either came from new metal or punk. It's absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah. probably not too much of a reach. That yeah, really isn't too much of a reach, right? Because. You know, you, you talk, Chris, about, you know, going back and you really can't dig the bands that were the progenitors of the sound. Like, Tim and I joke all the time, I, I think the Cro-Mags are fucking terrible. Me I too. think I think Minor Threat is terrible. Yeah, I don't too. ever need to hear any of that stuff again. I'm, like, super straight edge, and when I tell people I don't like Minor Threat, their eyes are all like, what? <laughs> uh, like, well... It, it's- it's not because of the straight edge thing, because I have no problem with straight edge. I, I think people that are straight edge are, I think that's fucking amazing that people can go their whole lives without, yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? The but, people like, hold up that band as like the holy grail of straight edge. Uh, and it's like, well, not for me. I mean, I have no, I have nothing against them. Like, I'm cool with the message and all that, but musically, I just can't do it. If, if, if I was to be straight edge, I would look after a band like Earth Crisis, you know what I mean? Well, yeah. I, yeah. I enjoy the, I enjoy straight edge music because, I mean, there's here, here's a band singing, standing up for something, right? I mean, where it's not just, hey, we're trying to get laid, or hey, we're trying to tour, we want to play Europe. There's there's a message back there, which I think is I think is it's admirable, right? It's not just yeah. you know singing for singing's sake. Exactly. See, I'm the same way though, Jay. If I never have to hear them bands' names ever again, I would give a fuck. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> Fucking, I really don't care about John Joseph and Harley anymore. Um, Chris, let me ask you this: What was your first new metal show? was literally just going to ask that. Uh, I don't I don't know if I can remember my first. This might be my first, but uh, I, I know it's my most memorable. So there is a venue called Northern Lights in mm-hmm. uh, Clifton Park, New York. I think it's called Upstate New York now, or Upstate uh, Music Hall or something like that now. But I saw 40 Below Summer, Scrape, <sighs> El Nino, and Spine Change there. Oh, wow, that's a lineup. So, yeah, dude, more people need. We need to talk about Forty Below Summer. More people need to know that band. I God enjoyed damn them amazing. back in my. I enjoyed them back in my like beginning of new metal, but like now when I try to revisit them, I, it's something about it I can't do. Maybe mm. I will give them another chance. Like because I like since you know I'm going and refining all these bands that I gave up on because of my stupid mentality at the time. Um, like. I'm coming across bands that I used to love, but now I, I'm not really into it anymore. So I don't know if I just need more time to, you know, get back into it or if it's just, it's passed uh, with me. Yeah. Sometimes it's just, it was the perfect music at the perfect time. And now when you go back, it's like, yeesh, I can't believe but, I was really into that. Yeah. But like 40 below summer, they put on a hell of a live show. So I, I can't take that away. No matter Absolutely. What. Yeah. Their, their mm. newest record is really, really good, man. You should really go back. And that's a band people listening are they need Jersey, to go back. Tim? Yes. But they're in Jersey, right? Yeah. 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 The guitar player from E-Town plays guitar for them now. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right there. What's that? I'll definitely give it another shot. I just don't think I gave them enough time because, like, it's weird. Like, if I listen to music <clears throat> online, you know, especially, like, 
you know, everyone posts like things from Spotify. I don't own Spotify, by the way. I have to do like Bandcamp or YouTube. So um, yeah, when I'm listening to stuff online, it doesn't really get my full attention because I'm like half listening to it. So if I have a hard copy in my car or at home, like I can really be like, oh shit, like really listen to it. And I, I don't know. I hear you. Forty below summer right now. So. No, I, I, I Tim and I are the same way. I mean, the, the only reason we have a Spotify account is for this show. Actually, I finally signed up for one. I'm a big, I'm a big believer in Bandcamp. Support the bands, buy the shit. You know, I mean, you don't need the physical copy, but it's nice to have. And it just, you know, put your money where your mouth is. If you right. like the band, every Friday this summer when they've done the whole, you know, uh, Bandcamp forgives all their proceeds. You know, they give it back to the bands. I spend Tim. It's a running joke with Tim and I. I spend twenty five, thirty bucks a clip. My wife is freaking out. She doesn't understand why there's like three hundred one dollar charges on my fucking bank account. She's like, "It's fraud! It's fraud!" I'm like, "No, it's actually just me. Don't worry about it." You would you would think you would be able to just put like all the songs you want into a cart and then just do it well, once. You can, but the way the way they do their credit card processing, like I like this past uh, Friday, yesterday, I bought a whole bunch of shit. I think I bought like twenty five bucks worth of stuff. But every band, it's a separate transaction because they take their percentage off the top, and I think it's probably negotiated differently. Like I bought a bunch of songs off a of comp. I bought that. Um, I bought that Trevor Something CD. I bought that Thirty Nights of Violence remix. You want to talk about industrial done well? The remix that they had done that one song is fucking awesome. And I bought a. I bought um that band by Jess and Colton from uh, Serration. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. World, what world, whatever. I bought that. I bought um. There was a Mind Force single I never picked up, a Defeated Sanity cover. Like, yeah, a bunch of stuff. But they and they have to charge it single by single. And the first time I tried to do it through PayPal, I had to use my credit card because when I tried to do it through PayPal, it kept throwing the fraud monitor. And it kept turning the, turning the transactions off. I'm like, what the fuck, man? I just want to download my shit. What's going <laughs> <Yeah>. on here? <laughs> I need my Friday music, man. Yeah, my Friday, my Friday blitz. Um, so let me ask you this, Chris. Um, what's the worst new metal band you've ever seen? Seen? scene or even or even one that you came across and you went god right. this well, is fucking terrible so that's hard because if i didn't like them i didn't pay attention to them even if they're like five feet in front of me but like when i went to that 40 below summer show with spine shank and scrape this is when scrape's second cd came out and that cd was absolutely horrible and they only played songs off that cd so Oof. for my memory that would be the worst okay Wow. Did, did, Jay, did you ask this or did, I don't remember if you asked this exact question, but I had this on here. Like when you, when you got into the new metal and you were like fully into it, did you get stuck? Did you get sucked into the look as well? Like no, the actually, I only did the, like uh, band shirts and like sweatpants or camel pants. I never, like I tried getting my cold tea long. Like, you know how like when said I had like the braided mm -hmm. goatee. I wanted to do that, but I got like I got sick of the idea of it and just shaved it off. Like it was taken like back then I couldn't do facial hair. Like I wouldn't grow for some reason. So it, never it takes forever to grow a goatee like that. Like yeah. it takes for fucking ever. Like that would be that was like my like my limit. Like maybe you know the braided goatee, but like I never did like the uh, what do you call those freaking jeans with all the chains on them. Oh, the Jenkos, the kickwares, the caffeine. Yeah, I never did that. Yeah. I was not like I get like to be honest though, when I would, you know, look up new bands, if they had that look though, then I knew they were about the new. So yeah. That got yeah. me interested, you know. But for me, it just wasn't my look. Yeah, I mean I, I think I dabbled in it too, and then I was just like, eh, do I need pants that you can fit a laptop in? Nah, I'm good. Uh, I never did the Jenkos, but I definitely had a couple pairs of kickwear in my, but also I'm older than you guys. Right. So it was still new when I got into it, like a senior year of college. That's what basically all I wore. And then I graduated and got a job and that basically went away. I think also, cause I come from a very small area in Massachusetts called the Berkshires and like, it's not a big city whatsoever. So like, I'm not around like the new metal crowd, like my friends around here and stuff, they were like the normies that would listen to like. Metallica and Megadeth and stuff like that. Like they, they like like bands like Disturbed and stuff like that. But they didn't go down the new metal rabbit hole like I did. You know what I mean? Right, right. So Berkshires, that's Western Mass, right? Yeah, that's as far Western Mass as you get. Yeah, like I mean, because from Albany. 
Oh, uh, okay. Because I was going to say, when you say upstate New York, that's Hudson Valley. That's Albany. That's, yeah. um, that's all those, you know, all those. Sh- the, the Berkshire's at the melting pot of like, like Massachusetts, upstate New York, Vermont, and Connecticut. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right in there. Yeah. The, the, does that part of Massachusetts have like a new metal scene? Is there no, bands up there? Yeah, no. that, that's what I figured. There's no. like a, and I think we spoke about this before about the scene up there being kind of small as well for it anything. Is, it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, they get, you know, there's a couple older heads in the hardcore scene I know here. And like, I, I think the most well known band to come out from the Berkshires is Blood War. And I know other members from other big bands like um, Push Button Warfare came from the area and stuff like okay. that. But, like, other than that, I mean, it's – I know people came from this area and moved away from the Berkshires and joined bands that, like, got huge and poured and all that stuff. But, like, I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean – Yeah, you you were saying that if you go to shows, it's always in upstate New York. Yeah, it's either an up, yeah. it was either in upstate or we had to go to, like, Holyoke or Chicopee, Mass. So, like, it was a drive no matter what. Yeah. I think uh, – is it Maniac Western Mass? Yeah, but they're like the Holyoke. Okay, uh, okay. Springfield, I think, area, which is like an hour, hour and a half from me. Mm. Man, that's a trek, right? And then, and then upstate New York. I mean, Albany, Utica, all that stuff up there. There's not a, there's not a lot up there, right? I have family uh, outside of Rochester, Syracuse, and it's like right. it's gorgeous, but there ain't much up there. No. And then when you head north past Syracuse, what is it? It's a tenth mountain, and then it's Canada. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck all that. Too cold. I can oh, already, I already feel cold thinking about where you're at right oh, now. Oh, fuck that. I love it. I love it. I love it. If it's <laughs> snowing in July, fuck yeah, I want to live there. I want to fucking live there. <laughs> wow, fuck all that, man. <laughs> so let me ask you this, Chris. Um, if, if, you could, if, you, if your band said, hey, you name the song, we'll cover it. We'll cover it, no matter what you want to cover. What would be your new metal pick to cover? Uh, funny thing, before Ed Wings was actually covered, the intro to Blind by Corn. The intro to Big Truck by Cold Chamber and the intro to Ten Ton Hammer by Machine Head multiple times. So it's pretty much all been done. Okay, okay. But if I had to do a full song, yeah, full I cover, probably, I would probably do Big Truck by Cold Chamber. <laughs> okay, Big Truck, interesting. Not or, rock or loco. Or okay. actually, the more I think about it, probably Robo by Cold Chamber. That has like a breakdown in it, so that would make more sense. Okay, okay. Clock. Oh, Ugh. that's a good one too. I, yeah, you know, yeah, it I, it, the sad thing is you hear I am giggling about Cold Chamber, and yet you name the song, and I can hear the chorus in my head. I can hear the guitar riff in my head. You know, I mean, it's it, it, their stuff was catchy. Right. Actually, I think the hardest cover by them would be Bradley because you could make oh, that song. Yeah. You could make that song hard, like even yeah, harder than it half, is. Slow it down to half time. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, yeah. Could. Yeah, you could do a any, lot of cool stuff with that to be one. Fair, any like any of the songs off the first two machine head albums is probably i mean a lot of hardcore bands do cover davion mm-hmm. so. <laughs> yeah 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 they yeah. do yeah I'm, now you got me thinking like can you imagine like chris comes into band practices okay hear me out we're gonna cover tokyo vigilante number one by power man 5000 right like, can you imagine like the room when he says that with a straight face because i can see the one like steve z right is the guitarist from he's from the side right yeah i yeah, can yeah. see him turn to the other guy going who gets the fucking bongos? <laughs> I don't know if those guys would do a new metal cover. I know before our wings would no problem. Those guys are more, they're like. More serious. I wouldn't say that. I just mean, I don't think they've ever really rode the new metal train. Okay. Like okay. a lot of those guys are like, I'm 37 and my guitar from before our wings is a year older than me. And like the two other guys are kind of younger, but like when it comes to like, we're getting tonight, like Steve's, I think like 28, but the other two guys are like, 19 and early 20. Jesus. So. Man, that's a that's an entirely different generation. You know? so, yeah. I don't even think they know what new metal is other than Slipknot. <laughs> yeah, that, what that's if, wild, man. What did Actually, Jordan... Uh, Tyler, the drummer, and uh, he was the bassist, but now he's the drummer for Forgive Us Tonight. Um, he loves God. So, I, like... I don't know... Able to I get away really, with something. Yeah. I don't know if I really would consider Godsmack a new metal band, but they played with a lot of the new metal genre, so I guess hand in hand yeah yeah i mean a lot of people would consider them but to me you're you're, you're right they're just a, ro- a radio rock band to me what did uh what did jordan from zone zero call it it's not new metal it's hard alternative Was yeah that hard his alternative term? yeah <laughs> yeah that's hilarious man that's what i would call filter like i don't even think filter's new metal like they're more oh yeah alternative to me. 
Yeah. Yeah, they're um, radio rock. I mean, Gold's Godsmack, Creed, all that Stain. stuff is t- it's stained, typically lumped in the new metal banner, where, yeah, it really is more of a hard alternative than anything. Right. I mean, Linkin Park, for their first record is, to me, is new metal, but then they go into that realm yeah. of Godsmack yeah. and stuff like mm-hmm. that, you know? Mm-hmm. And not to, not to get you guys pissed, but I would say Deftones would even hit that hard alternative and not the new metal. Uh, oh, yeah, no, yeah. they're not new Absolutely. metal. Absolutely. Nah. Absolutely. They, they spun out of the – I mean, we, Tim and I have talked about this. The Deftones are like – they're. I mean – they're the, I hate to say the new metal equivalent, but they're the new metal equivalent of like a Converge or a Mish, or a Meshuggah, right. where they totally do their own thing. They spawn countless imitators, and they always manage to say one step ahead of their imitation because they're always doing something new on every album. Yeah. No, you're not, they, you're completely grind. right. Yeah, I'm not knocking their grind. I'm just not a fan. That's yeah, all. yeah, no, no. And I was saying before we started recording. I mean, a lot of people get off. You know, they his voice just turns them off and i understand it it's a it's a voice you have to get used to there's nothing wrong with that at all no no not at all now now here's a band that me and you talked about before and i want to get back into it because now is the right time to do it and that would be mushroom head because Mm -hmm. i was very happy when you said you love that band because they're one of the bands in new metal that i think a lot of people just don't like for some reason and i don't get why is it the same thing as cold chamber they think they think they they think Mushroom had ripped off Slipknot when Mushroom Head was actually a band before Slipknot. But yes. Slipknot got huge before they did. Yeah. And of I, course. I don't think like nothing against Mushroom Head. I love that band, but they're definitely not in the same level as Slipknot. Like No. Mm-mm. And Mm-mm. and Mushroom Head was offered the Roadrunner deal before Slipknot and they turned it down. I really just He's... think it's a feud of the mass. Like they think it's a copy. But like even musically, Slipknot and Mushroom Head are not the same whatsoever. No. Mushroom not at all. That's more of a like industrial kind of rock vibe where Slipknot is. Well, maybe nowadays Slipknot has a little more of a rock vibe, but like when that Slipknot was first coming out, it was just it was just like ins- insanity almost. New metal, yeah, insanity. yeah, 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 no, no, yeah. And I, I just a lot because every every single time I tell people I like that band, they're like, oh, they're the worst, and I'm like, you've probably never even heard one song by them. You just automatically assume yeah. that they're the worst. It's yeah. funny, I found out about mushroom head before slipknot so me as well it's definitely the masks it's the you know slipknot was the first one making into the you know the cultural zeitgeist so whenever you see another band with mask your knee-jerk reaction is like oh what is this another imitator you know and then you had then you had mud vein come around the corner with the face paint which is you yeah. know the moto grader yeah moto oh my god moto- i love moto grader oh dude their that first record's incredible what's the name of the uh, instrument they came up with it, the motor has a, it, has a, it is a moto grader right it's a, okay. it's a bunch of elevator cables on a fucking board okay <laughs> that's what it is yeah, yeah yeah it's funny yeah and back to mushroom head real quick i like you said i heard of them before slipknot but i'll agree or i'll say Back then, when I heard that name, I was like, "Oh, that name is so dumb!" Like, no. And then I <laughs> listened to Slipknot before that, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, I I remember like twelve, thirteen years ago, my buddy was uh like really into that band, and we would listen to him every time we hung out, and I just fell in love with that band. Man, they're just they're just one of the best to do it in new metal in my eyes, man. It's catchy. It's like to me, it's just super catchy. It is, dude. They don't. They haven't wrote a bad record. They, they, the two newest ones have bad songs, but they're not bad records. I but the records the, before that are great. Yeah, I think uh, for me, they're my favorite one off from them is uh, X one 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 or whatever it's called. Thirteen, yeah, yeah, yeah thirteen. Yeah, that's, that's their best one. record. It However, is. Their best record. I have to give them mad props. A wonderful life, the newest one. I, I think it's near flawless. Like yeah, yeah, it's a good, it's very good record. And I mean, there it, are and, a couple songs where I can do without, but like there yeah. were seventeen tracks. I mean, what are you gonna do? Yeah, well, a lot of them are it's filler tracks. Album. It's yeah. a long album. It yeah, is. it's a lot of filler tracks, a lot of weird shit going on. But it's a great record. And you know how many people I love to fuck with when I'm like, you know, like J Man was like in integrity on two thousand <laughs> and stuff, right? And they're like, no, he wasn't. I'm like, yeah, he was. Go look it up, dude. I didn't know and, it was him, but I knew it was one of the members that was in a hardcore band. Yeah. Like, you know, he, like, helped write some of that, right? And they're like, no, no. Yeah, like, they don't, they don't like to admit it because it's such a, a sacred word to it's hear. It's the cognitive dissonance. Guy. 
It's yeah. the cognitive dissonance. It, it kind of like forces their brain to acknowledge something they don't want to acknowledge. I've had people literally argue with me for months about that. And I'm like, dude, just look it up. It's Go to the right fucking there Wikipedia in front page, of you. you jabroni. What are you worried about? <laughs> like even probably ringworm. There's probably been mushroom head people in ringworm. You know what I mean? Not, it would not be a surprise, right? I mean, I don't know if there was. I'm not saying there were, so don't quote me on that. But, you know, <laughs> it's, it's funny. I, funny. Found, I found mushroom head going through one of my buddies, like, uh, I don't know if it was like Metal Hammer magazine, but I just came to the page of the, of the cover of the XX album, and I just saw them. It was just the look that made me go, like, I have to go listen to this band. Yeah. I saw those masks. I was like, holy shit, I got to go check this band out. And I fell yeah, in love. They're a very, very catchy band, man. And they write, they're another band that writes simple riffs and simple lyrics, but they do it so well. Simple is more, I'm telling you. I, 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 do, I do think that's, that was one of the big successes of, of new metal. I mean, the, the lasting success was if you strip out some of the, if you strip out some of the extremes of the visuals and you strip out some of the extremes of the aesthetics, my 99% of the stuff that came out in that decade where new metal was the thing is radio friendly. We were just talking about this, right? It could have, it translates to playing big sheds in the summer, right? Like Ozfest was a natural step at that point, because this is music you should enjoy outside while you're half fucking wasted, you know, in the sun <laughs> in the summer. It's, it's, that's what it's made for. It, it, it really, it really is. There. A lot of what? There's a lot of drunk people at Ozfest. Oh my god, yeah. Ugh. By the time the third band went on, there's people pass out in the lawn drunk Ugh. already. I just I I never saw <clears throat> I never stuck around for any of the Black Sabbath sets. I was like, I don't need to see this. I, I just and at that point it was funny because you could see the shift change where all the younger kids were leaving and all the old people who were hanging out in the parking lot all day, <clears throat> right, were coming in because they wanted to see Sabbath and, and the fucking the shirtless Aussie. rednecks, that's what I call them. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep, that's how it was. Yeah. No, you, you you can't say that word anymore. Jesus Christ, you might what? get canceled these days. But redneck? I think you can say yeah. redneck, though, right? No, you can? Yeah. Oh, okay. I think so. No one cares about redneck, if anything else. You can call yeah. it redneck. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah we'll, we'll let that one go. Yeah, yeah. you can say redneck. Is if you start waving the General Lee Confederate flag around. That's where people start yeah. getting a little, That's a little upset. Right. Um, Two days after this episode comes out, Newbury gets canceled for redneck. <laughs> That's hilarious. Hey, hey, if Lamb of God can have a leadoff single titled redneck i think yeah. that's okay i think we're okay yeah. we're in good company there and you can try and cancel us we'll just laugh at you <laughs> yeah, but you can cancel two two guys in fucking the delaware valley talking about yeah. new metal to like two guys people. on zoom yeah, okay <laughs> 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 holy Funny shit stuff. the world the world's gonna lose a fucking huge uh, asset yeah right uh hey don't don't sell ourselves short no, um, I know, i'm just fucking around so let me ask you this chris uh if you could put together your own say new metal festival tomorrow i knew this was and, coming yeah this is one of my favorite questions because yep, it tells I a lot it. about people i um, love it and you could build your <clears throat> your five bands that you want on the show and it, and if you say you know i want x to do a reunion they have to do it who would be your five that you would put on the show um corn number one okay um because that has they have become like my favorite new metal band i used to hate them back in the when i first got a new metal but like now i love them uh, and they have to play the first three records only that's it <laughs> oh i love the whole discography actually the, the cd that got me them into me or that got me into them was um oh what's the name of that cd i got actually all my new metal cd sitting right here because i was putting it on my laptop but i want to get shit for this but the hardigan shift which how got me in the corn Wow! 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 That's that's a uh, that's a take I was not expecting, that, dude. I'm blown away at that one, man. <laughs> I think that CD's flawless. I'm not saying the rest of their CDs aren't. They all are flawless to me. But like that's the CD that got me into it, dude. I've really digged a new one. No, uh, it's great. not bad. It's yeah. not really bad. Great. But life is peachy is fucking nah. You, nothing touches that record yeah. to me. Yeah. All right. So we we yep. got you got corn. corn. Who uh, else? Spine shank. Okay. Good pick. Uh, Full Chamber. Okay. Pick. Here's going to be a band, I don't know if you guys heard of, a band called No One. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That was one of my favorite new metal bands. And let's get a band from, like, nowadays, Dead, D-E-D. -E yeah, yeah. Dude, I was telling Jay about them. They're very okay. good. I love that band. Yeah, they have a new record coming out soon, right? Yeah, I'm pumped. Yeah. There's another okay. band speaking, and, I, you know, we'll wait for that for because I – I seen that you had a bunch of releases that you like this year that I want to get into. 
Yeah. Uh, Cause there's probably a lot of stuff that we don't even know, honestly, but I want to get into that later. Right. But yeah, the, the DED, that, that band, Jake, write that down and check them okay. out, man. Okay. Yeah. I have, I saw my poster right here. Okay. Yeah, they're, uh, yeah, they're very they're good. Polling that's out right now, but they have a new CD coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is a very good record. It took me a couple of listens to actually get into that, but you know, Dude, the first well, song I heard, I was like, "What the fuck is this?" I had to go check it out. <laughs> you ever hear? You ever hear that Terror Universal? I don't even know what that is. Oh, well, you're you're going to know what it is. After yeah, this. Tim's going to hide your inbox. Here it comes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> Why do I have twenty eight fucking messages? <laughs> All from this fucking asshole. But yeah, that would be. I mean, if I could add more bands, I would. But yeah, I would say just off a of whim, that'd be that'd be five I'd really enjoy. I'll tell you that. What do, what, what do you think about? Because uh, I, I have this sneaking suspicion that the way that the music industry is going to get back shows and stuff like that is they're going to start running. Like I think you're going to start seeing, like in two years, you're going to see like Family Values again or Ozfest again. They're going to have to do something to pump the money in and to pump people into wanting to come out because I think a lot of people are going to be scared to go to like a, a five band show because they're like, well, I've seen them before. This is really not worth it. But if there's a festival and there's a bunch of bands that people haven't seen in a long time, there's a bunch of bands people didn't think they would ever see again. I think that's the way they're going to draw people in. So I think we're going to start seeing that kind of shit. I think if they're thinking, I think it's like, you're just talking like from the new metal standpoint or just like, hard alternative a rock or whatever i don't think that would ever be a problem but if we're talking about like hardcore like yeah no one's gonna care about like small hardcore shows but like nope. you're talking like huge like i'm mean, even like huge hardcore shows like let's say terror or something like that you know like i think people would care about that but i, I think you're gonna need to see i think we're gonna see we might see the mixed bill renaissance yeah right? absolutely right? where where you it, it, it's not gonna be as much as I would love to see a show of all tough guy, right? It's not going to be all tough guy. It's not going to be all hardcore. There's going to be a hardcore band. There's probably going to be a screamo band. There's probably going to be somebody that's close to metal, if not like like one of the brutal slam bands that's hardcore adjacent. And there's going to be some pop punk. I think that's the only way you're going to get people out of the house is you're going to have to do mixed bills where yeah. it's going to be an interesting experience. Absolutely. I think how the internet's going too, though. Like a lot of people say they miss live shows like do they really like you can just watch that shit on youtube live dude Eight that is or like that, that is one of the best points i've heard in a long fucking time and i'm gonna say i said the same fucking thing today i was talking to someone i said because i don't want to say their name because you know then people get all butthurt but he was saying today like i think right now after this all comes back the hardcore scene is going to be dead for a long time because it's going to be so fucking hard to get up and running, especially venues that are closing. I mean, who the fuck is going to go to a VFW on a Saturday night in some fucking asshole town in Jersey or something? You know what I mean? Like, it's going to be yeah. hard to establish this again. I, I think I think the venue, the death of the Darth of venues, is really what's going to come in, right? Because yeah. I mean, Tim will tell you, I would I was doing shows at least one or two a month, and like small hardcore shows and tiny venues right and i'm old but i don't care because i enjoyed like getting out of the house i like seeing live bands right i i saw fucking fuming mouth blast my face off with like 20 people it was amazing but i i, I don't think there's there are there are definitely people that i have noticed in that room that they're there for the scene and to be seen yes. they're not there because they truly enjoy the music that, where dude, that's 80 fucking percent of the most people. The, there are some of us that really do just enjoy going out to a show and fucking loud music and when you can smell the electricity like there's nothing like that and I it's funny it's, just, it's funny you say that jay because that exact conversation happened today with the person i'm talking about like a lot of people go to shows just to be seen and to be like mm -hmm. oh oh he goes to every show he supports but it's like come on dude yeah, yeah. what, what were you gonna I say don't. chris i said I I'm, I agree with you guys, but like at the same time, I try to be like open-minded. Like we're older, so like we might, you know, it's it's kind of a younger kid scene if you think about it. True, true, very true, very true. It is a hardcore is a young man's game. We're just we're yeah. we're we're crazy enough to stick around. Like I always told myself when I got into hardcore, like I was like, this is it. This is the only thing I'm gonna listen to. I'm gonna die a hardcore kid. And now here I am, 37. I'm like. I don't even know if I want to re like call myself a hardcore kid anymore. I'm more like a new metal head. <laughs> like, dude, I'm I'll, hurting backwards. Yo, it's funny you say that, man, because I'll I'll openly admit it, dude. Like, I fucking <laughs> have a, I have a hardcore podcast. 
<laughs> and you don't like hardcore. We, and I don't even like hardcore anymore. <laughs> like, like I can't there, stand there's hardcore. Of, there's a lot of there's a lot of like when it comes to like straight up hardcore, like I don't listen to it anymore really. Like Me I either. still love I still love Death Before Dishonor. Um but like I still like beat down, I still like the tough guy mosh core stuff. Yeah. But like I don't even really listen to it. Like if you if I had my iPod and didn't lose it, you, you would see like all the last couple of listens were nothing but new metal CDs. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. that, that's what I listen to probably ninety five percent of the time. Dude, my but, most listened to thing on my my Apple Music is fucking White Zombie. Okay. And I have a hardcore podcast. <laughs> I mean, come on, dude. I think for me it's Misery Index. Yeah, it's no, definitely yeah, misery, misery Index. Um, but I mean, also, Chris, I think that comes with age, yeah, right? Because when we're all young, we're like, oh, that, that's terrible. I don't want to listen to that. And then you get older, and you're like, if I listen to, to fucking, if I listen to Beneath the Massacre nonstop, I'll turn into a serial killer. Now, it's great music, but I literally will turn into Ted Bundy. Like, you, you need that, I need that Limp Biscuit balance. Jesus, yeah. I can't believe I just said that. Yeah, next thing you know. I think that what it was. Yeah, I think what it was with me is also like, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but like with like hardcore beat down and all that, there's only so much you can do. Like, there's no rules in new metal. Like, I come to find. No, yeah, get, exactly. Break out the fucking bongos. Here we go. Break yeah. out the bongos and the fucking the guy with the fucking hanging chimes and Power Man Five Thousand. You know, and I buy, am a, those, buy a turntable. Those, yeah, <laughs> I'm one of those assholes who like when it comes to like hardcore. Like, I definitely just want to hear hardcore. I don't want to at extra stuff but like a new metal i'm like fair game do whatever the hell you want mm-hmm. as long as and, it's catchy, yeah. i'm cool and, and i want to go back and reiterate something because people are going to take what i said the wrong way like about me hating hardcore oh then why do you interview hardcore bands but here's the thing a lot of the bands i interview yes are considered hardcore but i'm talking about a specific type of hardcore it's right. like it's like we said, like that crow mags and that shit. That shit, I just nope, don't want to, don't care for it, don't ever want to do it again. No. Even when so. I found hardcore, like cause, like I said, a lot of the hardcore popular nowadays is like the metalcore stuff. And like even yeah. when I found hardcore, I wasn't into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like like yeah, I mean, like, like misery signals and stuff like that. I'm like, eh. You yeah, know. You, you know it's funny. Like I used to be huge into that stuff, and nowadays it's just like, all right, like the new Misery Signals record is very good, but at the same time, give me thirty six Crazy Fist. You know yeah. what I mean? Okay. Like it's just I, I it's it, it's all been done before. I don't need to hear it anymore. It's like just, I get, like I said before. I think it's because I like my music simplistic. So it's like you're giving me all these metaphor bands that are just doing a billion different things at once. Are just mix up and there's really no strong song structure, not at mm. least in my mind, or not at least that I can follow. I just don't care for it. Like, like a big one, I kind of used to like was Martyr AD, but like if I try to listen to it now, I'm just like, oh, I can't do it. Yeah, yeah, no, I see, I, I see what you mean. And, and the the great thing about that's new crazy metal, talk, that's crazy talk. <laughs> yeah, the, it's fucking crazy talk. But whatever, whatever, it's fine. The great, the <laughs> the great thing about new metal, and and this is. Like what me and Jay, me and Jay, you know, we, we bullshit it because he like, he listened to ill street news, cool, whatever. But once me and him figured out that we were big new metal fans, it was like an instant friendship. You know what I mean? You don't really see that much in hardcore. Like you, you meet people and they're just like, Oh yeah. They have like a sick of it all shirt on. You're like, ah, cool. Yeah. You know, I like that band a little bit. And it's like, all right, see you later. But when it comes to like new metal and shit like that, it's like an instant, like, Yo, like we could talk about this all fucking day, and that's what we're doing now. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna I, I, shit. I'm, yeah, sorry, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna shit on hardcore, but I also think it's like they always talk about like um, if you don't listen to the right bands, you're not really a hardcore person. Uh, yeah. There's a little I've never bit. Never really of, had that in new metal, right? The, the, and I think that's because you know there is the there is the um, the scene police, right? And I think that's because hardcore came from punk rock music, and they were always protecting, you know you know, the New York Dolls and all that sort of shit when it was first coming up in New York, right? They were very insular and very against the grain, whereas new Metal came out of left field. It became this giant world-spanning trend fad, you know, interest. You couldn't seen police fucking Corn Limp Biscuit and fucking, I don't know, Dry Kill Logic fans. You couldn't because they were coming from the woodwork. So it is kind of more like less, and it's less... Less serious, I guess, or less uh, less self serious. Maybe I say this is what I've always kind of said. I like, I think new metal is corny, but not in a bad way. I think it's meant to be corny. 
Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know damn well Fred Durst, when he got up there with his red hat on backwards and the Dickies, he knew he was he was playing to a fucking image. And look what happened. He basically, Corn and Limp Bizkit built Hot Topic. I am convinced of that. Without those two bands, there is no Hot Topic. Yeah, you're 100% correct. I mean, if you say you're wrong, if someone says that that's wrong, they're a fucking asshole. Well, because no, if they is. say I'm wrong, call us up and let's get on the show and defend your argument. Right? Yeah. Tell me, tell me where the hot topic comes from without new metal. The they fucking don't. fat records and the pop punk garbage, like Blink One Eighty Two. No, no. Yeah, it's they might with sell age. shirts, but it's definitely with age where I feel like I just don't want to take my music as serious anymore. Like when I was on hardcore, it was like serious guy. You had to defend it. Yeah. You know, like I got really nothing like. People talk shit about new metal all day. Like, even the conversation online, like, talk shit about Cold Chamber. Like, I don't care. I love the band. Who cares? Yeah, fuck well, you. It's a fun time. Well, <laughs> well, see, that's a big stigma in hardcore, too, that I always bring up. A lot of people are, are scared of the word. They're scared of the genre. And it's like, oh, my God, don't let anyone know at, in hardcore that I like this because then I might be feathered out as a fucking outcast or something. And it's like, who cares? Like, Dude, I don't know who cares. Like that. I don't yeah. know if it's like that with a younger crew nowadays. I see a lot of slips not porn shirts at shows nowadays. It's a younger kid. But like yeah. definitely the older heads, I feel like I like that. Yeah, I want to be the fucking outcast. You know what I mean? Like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> That's where I'm going to be is... after this airs. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tim, I, aren't, I don't aren't know. you the kid? Aren't you the kid that said uh, you hate hardcore? But you're yeah, I don't know if I want to. Show? I don't know if I want to come on your show because you're a hardcore podcast and you don't like hardcore. It's like, yeah, yeah. well, you know. Ah, you know, pays the bills. Um, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, what was I just going to ask? Shit, I just lost my train of thought there. I, well, while you're thinking about that, I wanted to, um, I wanted to ask you about a band. Here, I, I want to ask you about this band also because a lot of people hate this band. What do you think of Orgy? Oh, I never liked them. I, and I figured you were going to say that. <laughs> Um, I, I think Candy of, like, Ass is a great record. Like uh, Blue Monday was cool. And I think they had one other song, Stitch or something that I like. Is it Stitch? Yeah. Stitch is, that is the name of it? Yeah. I think that those are the two songs, but like as a band, not really my thing. It's the same thing with like that band Godhead. They had like one or two songs. Mm-hmm. It's just like, I don't know. Like it, uh, How do I describe it? I don't know. It's you, just not you, my thing. Like, you don't like the nice. whole, you don't like the whole look of it. I think it's. I think what I call it's gothic new metal. I'm not really. Yeah, yeah. Gothic. That's what I mean. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a. That's that's essentially what I mean. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because so, a lot yeah. of people are thrown off by it. How, how about a band like Nothing Face? They're a band that I don't really hear about people talking about. It's funny. I, I just recently started giving that band some listens. I'm like, there's some songs I like, but I still have to dive deeper to really give my opinion about that. Okay. Because I don't want to say I don't like them, and the only reason why I would say that, if I said that, was because I don't know much much about them right yeah like yeah, I'm still yeah, 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 yeah. Them, so. that second album is pretty good what is that a uh, uh, everyday uh, audio guide to everyday atrocity is that the second yep. album yeah it's pretty good yeah yeah they're they're all their stuff's good man is do, do you remember what you're gonna say now jay uh no no it, the fucking train is sailed <laughs> the ship is sailed okay. i'm like shit what was i gonna say i don't know all right so let's get in the present day new metal um why, why do you think like the resurgence has happened i just think it's the same everything comes in cycles it's like with hardcore, like what's popular right now in hardcore. It's just coming to say, like, I'm still waiting for the 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 freaking tough guy Moshcore to rear its head again and be like super mm-hmm. popular. But then well, I'd look be what hardcore. happened in 16. Metallic hardcore comes back. Yeah. It came back fucking huge mm-hmm. and it's starting to fizzle off again yeah. now. But I want like, the tough guy to come back. But we'll, yeah. we'll see. Yeah, yeah, like you, you're waiting for like the build upon frustration era to come back and yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, like, give me fucking first out. blood touring the states again. Yep, yep. And it's funny because they, them, and first blood and Wild of Jericho just did a tour not too long ago. And before our wings played one of the dates. Oh, I, I was actually at the. Uh, I'm assuming you guys played one of the New England dates. I'm assuming. Yeah, we played Connecticut. Okay, uh, me and uh, Tim's partner in crime, Adam. We caught it in Philly. It was. Um, uh, who else was it? It was Left Behind. It was Sanction, and then yeah, the local opener. Yeah, yeah, the local opener was Freeze. They were the yeah. local opener. Yep, that was the tour package. And, and it's everybody funny, left for Walls of Jericho. Dude, oh my God! I'm don't even get me started. I'm it like, was, you disappoint me. 
Yeah, yeah Chris, it, it, you know, I, I honestly, I left it at the first one because that's who I really wanted to see. I love Sanction. I thought Left Behind, they put out two awesome albums back to back. I love I, I really wanted to see First Blood. I left it after that. And then it was apparently empty for Walls of Jericho. Like when you watch Sonny's video, there's like maybe. It, that's how it was in Connecticut, too. Okay. Okay. Which is strange to me. It is kind of strange because they the the two bands are from the same era. They ran in the <clears> same <throat> crowds, you know. Well, I think it's just because those bands are from that era. Like a lot of kids, they care more about like cause Sanction's a newer band, so like they, they know about Sanction. Like, like that the tough guy stuff from the oh like two thousand four. It's like unheard of. They don't know about it. They're like, yeah, you know, they don't hear about it a lot. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so let let's all right. We we talked about the resurgence now. Let, let's talk about some bands, like especially in the year 2020. Like, what what have you, what have you been hearing? Like, because it's to me, it's very hard to like a lot of the new new metal stuff because a lot of it to me is what they call new metalcore, and yeah. I can't stand all uh, that fucking um, I wheel like and the, guitar shit. Like uh, enough, like enough the with band. the vein worship. Yeah, uh, I, see, that's like nothing against vein, but like. Um, my band has played a couple shows with them, and like I've seen them build their like from the bottom up. I've seen them like yeah, yeah, yeah. everything they got, but like when hardcore bands put new metal into their music and call themselves new metal, I can't stand it because you're not like me, the music me, is still it. hardcore, you just have new metal parts, right? Yes, like, um, but for like bands nowadays that are that I would call straight up new metal, even if they have little, it's like new metal bands having like, hardcore parts is okay. You know, mm. like um, like uh, this band called Blood Youth. I really yep. like. Um, I mean, Dead doesn't have hardcore parts, but they're a new metal band from nowadays. Um, the Tala band, someone just told me about. I just checked them out and I really dug them. Yeah, it's good. But they they have like hardcore and like weird metal parts, but like to me, it's still a new metal band. Yeah, like overall, they're new metal. Yeah, um, yeah. Tim sent me that Blood Youth uh, disc. It's good. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love Zone Zero. You're one of my mm-hmm. favorites. Yeah, dude. Um, yeah. Uh, who else? I like this band, but they might be more considered like the the new metal core. But this band called Backwards, I'm really into. Backwards. Backwards. Uh, the vocalist was from a band called Fire and the Gods or something like that. I don't know. Some band I don't give a shit about. But oh yeah, yeah. I know you're talking about yeah. But but I mean that CD was really fucking good. Um, I'm sure there's some bands like. You know, I'm drawing a blank. Like, Sentence to Burn really good, was really good. Yeah, I, I sent Jay that mm-hmm. last week. Yeah, seven good. Layers of Skin is really good. And then yep. I guess one of their members started a new band called Al- Almerta. Yeah, I, a fucking... I really like that. I reached out oh, to them to so come on good. the show. I like that a lot. But that's one of those bands what, that I consider new metal that has hardcore. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I really liked, um, what did I send Tim? Guerrilla Warfare. They do yeah. like an almost like a, a, a Rage Against the Machine ish type of Caden stuff. Yeah. Um, I really like that stuff. That Tala album is great. Zone Zero is great. Um, oh, also, because um, they're coming out, they just dropped out the single and they're coming out with a new CD next year. But uh, uh, the guy from Corn's other band, Love and Death, I really like. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Great, great stuff, man. There's, yeah. another, there's a band that just put a record out this year called 13. It's uh, X, uh, I guess, III, you would say. They're, they're, that's a great new metal band just came out. I forget what the record's called, but that's really good stuff. Check that out, too. I really like King Ink 10. Like, I feel like if King Ink 10 came out in, like, the, the start of new metal, they'd be huger than they are. Yeah, yeah, that, that new record's great. Yeah. I mean, I, I honestly think, like, a band like a Code Orange or even, like, a Vein, they could put out a straight new metal album next, and everyone would go, yeah, it makes sense. That's the way they were going. So yeah, and, and, and why do, I would and love why do certain bands... Code Orange and Vein. See, this is a question that I've asked hardcore kids, and they can never answer it. Why do certain hardcore bands that turn new metal get a pass, and all of a sudden everybody loves them? It's just uh, who you know and how popular you were in the first place. It's just like a, it's a social status kind of, okay. you know, stature kind of thing. That's, That's my is what it is. And no, saying, it is. I'm not saying that as a, it's a bad thing. That's just how it works. No, no, no. You're exactly right. Like a yeah. band, like like a lot of people are like. Oh, Harm's Way is a hardcore band. Yeah, they are. But you know where them riffs are coming from. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I you know I think, where them riffs come from, right? I think a band like a Code Orange or a Vane, I think it's an it would be seen as natural progression because 
Code Orange uses a lot of electronics. Vane's starting to use more electronics and they have a DJ tour with them and it actually adds to the show. So a straight like fucking, you know, Limp Biscuit worship album would be like, I, okay, I no, get it. I've heard, I mean, a lot of the, the new, I've listened to a lot of the new Ford Orange and like a lot of it is new metal and I uh-huh. freaking love it. So I'm hoping both those bands just be like, you know, we had our fun with hardcore and metalcore, but let's just go new metal. Uh, like, the, do me that favor. The new Code Orange, I think, is if Nine Inch Nails and New Metal had a kid. But there's also even some radio rock parts, like where Reba sings, where it actually really fits okay. and sounds awesome. I like I like softer new metal songs. Mm-hmm. I'm cool that. Yeah, like like Zone Zero is on the softer side of new metal. Yeah, and they I think... are, but they're still. It's funny that you say that because like what I bought the as soon as I heard that band, I bought their CD on off their Bandcamp, and they sent me like a demo CD of like three unreleased songs that they haven't put up on on like, other than Virus. Virus they put up, but there's still two songs they haven't put up yet. And like, it's a little harder than that EP, but I mean, it's still good no, no matter what. What the fuck? We we had Jordan, yeah, Jordan on, and we don't even get Jordan. to hear these songs. Yeah, we're we're taking umbrage with you, buddy. So much for that. Uh, cross. What were we gonna do a deep dive with him? Cross crossbreed was it? Crossbreed, yeah. Yo, oh. Don't even give me. That's one of my favorite bands, Crossbreed. No fucking way, really? I love Crossbreed. All right, so we're getting Chris on the show too. We'll do two guests and we'll do a, a Crossbreed deep dive. Dude, Let's I do listen it, man. To, I listen to KE 101 religiously. Jesus. That's like my favorite That's, album by them. It, it's surprising, man, because I went back and listened to that record a few months ago. I'm like, it's not bad at all. Like, no, no, no it's it's not. It's just and and the joke I've made to to Tim Chris was that if you were to boiled down new metal into the perfect simulacrum of the stereotype that'd be them crossbreed it's fun it's it's jumpsuits it's glow-in-the-dark tattoos it's a turntable guy it's white guys with dreads i never it's yeah yeah, i never seen them live but i've seen videos and they take like they take like grinders and grind their fucking keyboards and stuff yep yep very head PE, yeah, driving the angle grinder across yeah, the front yeah, of the keyboard, exactly. yeah. So, so a band that we talked about earlier, but we didn't get into, uh, Moto Grader. Yep. Before, before Ivan Moody left, yep. that record is one of the people listening. That is an essential, essential new metal record. Ivan Moody, the dude from Five Finger Death Punch? Yes, yeah, he, he used to sing. That band. Yeah. He was in Moto Grader? Yeah, yep. he was the, he's on this CD right here. There you go. No shit. Yep. yep. That and is an essential that. record for new metal I mean, for me. Financially and fame wise, he made the right decision, but to me, musically, he made the worst decision. Yeah. Oh, they're terrible. They're they fucking. Are. They're they're uh, a uh, they're they get they're, stuck they're, in the new metal genre though. A lot of people put them in no, new metal. They don't know I mean, they're, they're truck nuts. The band. <laughs> Five Finger Death Punts is Truck Nuts, the band. If you see a guy who has the fake nuts hanging off the back of his truck hitch, if you, <laughs> if you turn that into a band, it would be Five Finger Death Punts. So that's it's all terrible. Of, yeah, so that's, that's my the area best of the, ever. That's my area of the Burks is in a nuts show because they probably all jock that band. <laughs> oh, and they probably all have tribal tattoos and drink Monster religiously. No, absolutely. Yeah. Oh my god! Absolutely. And when they get home with their monster uh, rage, they beat the shit out of their yeah. wives, <laughs> punching holes in the drywall. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's a terrible stereotype. I really saw uh, one of the assets I went to. Moto Grader opened up. I got there mid set, and they put on a fucking good show. This is when Ivan was in the band, and you know Moto Grader was first coming up. Dude, so I not- got to see him live with Ivan. Fortunately. Listen, I hate Five Finger Death Punch, and it's not because everybody else hates them. They're just suck. But at no, the same really time, I, I, I can't, I can't wrap my head around the fact that the guy from fucking Five Finger Death Punch was in Moto Grader, and yeah. he basically gets a pass for being in Moto Grader. Like you would think that you would think the people who want to keep it real would be like, "Weren't you the dude in that band that they made up their own instrument?" Like you would think that yeah. would happen. But, they but don't, at, at the same time, know. he's got one of the best voices in music, though. He's a great singer. Yeah, he is. For Moto Grader, he was excellent. Yeah. Like, I've heard Moto Grader's new stuff with a new singer, and the new singer's okay, and the new Moto Grader music is it's more cookie-cutter, in my opinion. It's not yeah. as good as that CD, but, like, Ivan... How are you going to replace Ivan? Like, I don't have... I'm not trying to put him on a pedestal, but you got to really think about it. Like, he was great. Hey, no, no, you're 100% correct, and I want you to... um. 
there was another CD that you held up before we started recording, and now I'm forgetting what it was that I want you to hold up again that we could talk about, which is that Dry Kill Logic disc that you oh, held yeah. up. Uh, Darker Side of the Nonstick. Right, right, right. Was it the first one? Oh, per- awesome. Awesome Dude. album. Dude. We're going like to deep dive. Dream too, but this one's really good. We have to do a deep uh, dive yeah. on this album because I went back and listened to this. I had it on my, uh, on my phone as I was blowing out my leaves on my driveway. And I listened to the whole album and then I went, fuck. And then Tim, Tim will laugh because I texted him as I was blowing out the leaves. I'm like, dude, we need to do a deep dive on this CD. It's really fucking good. And I forgot I know how fucking good it is. I actually know a good handful of other like hardcore kids like my age that love this thing. Or at least love this CD. So. That's wild. <laughs> Did you hear the two new, the two singles they put out yeah, one horrible. last year? You you think they're horrible? I can't stand anything past the bed. I think they're trying to just be metalcore, which is hey, that's fine, that's their business. But like to me, like the the first two albums were straight up new metal. And yeah, no, absolutely. Now, mm-hmm. You know they're not anymore. Yeah, you're you're def they're they're definitely trying to be metalcore. But the newest the song last year, the chorus part is just straight new metal stuff. That wasn't bad. I didn't think it was bad. I didn't think it was great, but I didn't think it was bad. I think my mistake is going and thinking they're going to be new metal again. I, I, I think that was like, I got to stop that. When a band says, oh, we're going back to our roots or something like that. I'm like, nah, you, you can't. You're too old. Well, it, well, anytime a band says they're going back to their roots, they don't. It's no. kind of like when, when Slipknot was like, oh, the new record, it sounds like Iowa. And you put it on, it sounds nothing like Iowa. Like, I don't know what, I don't know what <laughs> you're smarter smarter listening now, to. But, I'm yeah. smarter than that. So I know going in, it's not going to sound like that. But that's okay. Like, I still think the new record is great. So it's like Metallica. If, if they ever, and this will never happen because they're the biggest metal band of all time, but if they were to somehow hit a slump and people stopped listening to them and stopped streaming them, all they would have to do is go, we're in the studio and we're putting out a lot of shit that sounds like Master of Puppets. Right there, boom, they get a fucking spike like this. Mm-hmm. And then the record comes out and it just goes, it sucks. You know what I mean? Because that's the kind of shit that people do nowadays. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like when Manson said, oh, the new record sounds like Andy Christ Superstar. And then I go, oh, my God, because that's one of my favorite records ever. And then you put it on, and We Are Chaos is a fucking amazing record, but it's not Andy Christ Superstar. No, it's, Don't uh, ever get my whole hopes up like that. <laughs> no, the newest one is basically Mechanical Animals Bowie Worship mixed yeah. with his earliest stuff with Nine Inch Nails. That, yeah. That's how I think it sounds. I think it's basically. great, but it's not, it's not Andy Christ Superstar. No, not at all. It's not even close. It's kind of like Corn was saying on the new record. Oh, we went back to our roots. Yeah, well, everybody says that. Oh, it's going to be our heaviest album. It's like, no, it's not. Nah, it's, it's going to be fucking reinventing the steel, Pantera. Get serious. Yeah, it's just not going to be some, far beyond driven. It's because you had some bagpipes in your opening track. Don't mean it's fucking <laughs> self-titled, bro. That's not how this works, man. If you want to go back and sound like that, you need to get back. See, a lot. that's what a lot of bands make the, they, they make the mistake at is they go back and try and write stuff that they first did, but they're not in the vibe of that. They're older. You can't. Yes, you can't. exactly. Like you have to go it. back. You have to, you have to go back it. and get into that vibe. And I, mean, I, know you, I know you hate the Deftones, but Chino said this on the new record. We needed to fucking get back where we were, so we went back to the first studio where we wrote Adrenaline, and this is what you got on the new record. And it shows because they went yeah. back and they got that vibe back they got the friendship back, and that's how it works. If you're if you're writing shit from a studio, and then three other people are in Iowa, the other three are in LA, you don't get that vibe, and you're I not going to get that it's, record. You can't. You can. You know, the old saying is, you can never go home again. And yeah. how could Corn ever come close to that? You know, young kids in a in a studio where Ross Robinson is throwing shit around, right? They're all tweaking and they're all drinking, and they're and they're just they're out of their minds, right? And they're hungry. How can you come back to that? You know, you like can't. once once you're a huge international touring band, uh, how are you going to still be mad at your parents? How are you going to still sing about being mad at your parents? It's like, yeah. are you kidding me? You bought your parents a house with a swimming pool, and like, you can't you can't, be, you can't sing about that shit anymore. I'm sorry. Yeah, your and, best and bet is much, just hang it up and try something new. And how much of the vibe from bands like Corn on their self title did you get from the pain that he feels from his father and stuff? Oh like, yeah, you it was get that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if Ivan Moody went back to Moto Grader, you're not going to get that record. It was well, because he's, he's, no, he's, he's, and, and that, and yeah. he's probably going to be drunk and thrown out of the band, like he is with Five Finger Death Punch. But, oh, I think he sobered up, though. Oh, okay. He's uh, up. Truck nuts the band. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, see, uh, see, that's another thing. I'm all about people getting sober and all that stuff. Like, if if you have a problem with drinking and you get sober, cool. Yeah, get but your don't shit shove it. Don't shove it down my fucking throat. I don't want to hear that shit. Yeah, I mean, I also think that I, I had this conversation. This is wildly off topic, but I had this conversation with somebody else about the 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 rise of uh, children being provided psychopharmaco- psychopharmacological drugs to modulate their moods. Right, like some of the some of the best art that we we enjoy, right, comes from people who are arguably tortured. Right, they have some issues, they have some stuff they're trying to deal with, and that art comes from that place of trying to deal with where I find myself in my life. And yeah. I just I I made the remark that I kind of worry that we are killing off the next generation's Picasso, you know, the next generation's Trent Reznor, you know, the next generation's beautiful creative artist because we've taken that that are admittedly tortured part out of their out of their soul you know you know it's funny you say that because when i went from like new metal to like hardcore it's it's not just because i found hardcore because at the end of like you know my new metal days for that time period like a lot of the music was like teenage yanks and our teen, teen day yanks, teenage angst and like uh i didn't really have that in me i come from a good family my parents are still married you know like mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. like I didn't feel anymore. I don't, you know, like this wasn't, I wasn't claiming edge then, but like I still, I've never done anything in my whole life. I never tried cigarettes. Like I think I had sips of my dad's beer when I was a kid, but not knowing any better. So like I've never done that stuff. And a lot of the new metal bands would talk about getting high or like the last time I saw Machine Head, he's talking about doing horse tranquilizers on stage. So like that kind of turned me off, you know what I mean? For someone yeah. like me. So yeah. like I, I hear where you're coming from. Oh, oh, but, but also it's angst anymore. I was like Machine eh. Head. I mean, it's Rob Flynn. I mean, he has no excuse for those dreadlocks and stuff. The, his yeah. look on Supercharger, right? He should be paying penance for that for eternity. I don't he care. I love slapped. it. That's the look I want from a new metal band. <laughs> no, no, no. You're right, but he just he just did it all the wrong ways, man. You know, you know the I mean? hot take people are getting mad at me from. I I actually after um what was their Machine Head's fifth album? From the ashes of empire. blackening, uh, no, not that one. It's from the ashes of empire or something like yes. that. Oh yeah, yeah through yeah, the ashes yeah. of empires. That's right. That was the last CD I liked. Anything past that, I hated. Except when Catharsis came out, I think that CD is flawless. It's almost like going back to like their new metal albums. It, it is, but the lyrics on that record are so bad, I can't listen to it. Uh, the lyrics on Supercharger were fucking horrible, but that CD <laughs> sucks. Awesome. I I think but Supercharger. <laughs> oh, all right, here's Tim's hot take. I think Supercharger is the f- worst new metal album I've ever heard. Uh, it's good. Oh, God. I love no, corny new metal, man. I can't help yeah, it. Dude, when he goes, dude. oh, I, I turn it off right I there. knew you were going to yeah, reference that. Get that, that out of my face. What does what does, uh, freaking Jonathan Davis do? Like, <laughs> I don't know what he fucking does. <laughs> yeah. What no, I, okay? I skip twist all the time. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but what makes that okay? We need but, to yeah, have no. the Rob Flynn sample as the lead into this show. Yo, yo, <laughs> remind me because I'll do it in two seconds. That's that. Consider that done. <laughs> Rob hey. Flynn with Max Cavalera going, bring the shit, and then we'll yeah. go right into the intro. Yeah, yeah I'll consider it done. <laughs> if the surf go wah and everyone loves it, and I think, oh god, that's they can get away doing all these monkey do you, noises. Do you think that bothers them, Chris? Like that they're they're most well known for the the meme that comes out of him going, oh. Wah! Like, do you think? You know, it's easy for, for me to say, why would you be? Because I'm not them. But, uh, yeah, they probably don't like it. <laughs> it's like the... like the, the They can't escape it. They're, like, trying to mature and, like, nope, some drunk guy's going up and, wah! Yeah. Like, you know? Yeah, like, it's like when, um, like, Mudvayne and the poor guy from Mudvayne, right? When the Berber Den came out. And I, uh, I, Ryan Martin is an amazingly talented bassist. Like, he is sick... And the drummer, their, their whole rhythm section is just amazingly fucking talented. And right. it's kind of, I love that album. And it, it's kind of like, they kind of get the short shrift by being known as the Berber Dang meme band, you know? Yeah, I hear you. I, I mean, think about it. Hate Breed's known for the, the, the um, that noise Jamie Jasta makes. Like that, uh, what is it? The blah! <laughs> and it's funny because I love it. Because I do that all in before I wing songs. I do that in Forgiveness Denied songs. Like, I kind of, I stole it from them. And, like, I love it. So, 
it's like people like we were talking about like people getting passes for doing certain things like to me it's all the same like you're making yeah. weird noises like in the great scheme of things yeah that would be considered corny but since, yeah like, i i think you're right are, who you are it's okay it, it becomes almost like a like an audio calling card like right. you can automatically hear that and go oh i know who that is yeah so i love it all it doesn't bother me one bit <laughs> but it might bother the stir <laughs> <laughs> uh, as they go home again to their mansion in California. Yeah. With the so maybe pool. they're not. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I don't think they have much to complain about. To get, even though that was like them and Creed and Godsmack, that was just not not my thing. Right. Not my thing. Hey, so can we get into the whole Sepultura Slipknot era? Yeah. So are are you a Sepultura fan, Chris? Um, I'm not, but not because I don't like them or anything. I just never listened to them. I did like Slow Fly, but I never got into Sepultura. So you've never heard Roots? I've heard that song, but like I haven't heard that. Like I have tried to listen to the album, but I mean, I think it's too thrashy for me. I'm not really? a big thrash fan. Okay. Like, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I really don't like metal other than new metal. Like I don't like oh, okay. anything okay. that's not new metal in the metal genre. So like a band like Carcass comes on, you're just like, nope, turn it off. No. Nope. Like a lot of it's funny because like a lot of bands that I would like or I do like, you know, are influenced by like Entombed and stuff like that. But I don't, I can't listen to that. Like I'm not into it. Oh man, Left Hand no. Path is just fucking so good. Like I'm oh, not yeah. a metalhead whatsoever. Wow. Yeah, that's I'm barely crazy, a hardcore man. kid. Like <laughs> I, I just do metal. <laughs> No, nah, no, nah, that's fine. I was, I was just curious because a lot of people have hot takes on like you know, well, Roots isn't really a new metal record. It's like, yeah, it is. It's, yeah, it it's is. a new metal. Well, people record. say that about the first two Machine Head albums, but in the great scheme of things, it's groove metal, which entail became new metal. If you think about it. <clears throat> oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't consider you know more things change a new metal record, but you could see where, where he was going. going with yeah. it. Yeah, it's like yeah, the this- Spin Lab, like. They kind of had they're kind of a groove metal, and then they came up with a third album that's straight new metal. Yo, yo, I, I'm so glad you brought that up because this is a band that I don't think me and Jay ever talked about. Skin Labs Disembody the New Flesh is a fucking amazing record, dude. I haven't listened to that album in ages. I gotta dude, take that out. So I used to good. listen to it, but like, I can't, like, nowadays I can't go back except for the new, el- the new metal album. I can listen to that one, but the other ones are, I'm like. It's not for what, me anymore. What's the new metal record called again? Uh, I can't remember. I know it had like a blue cover. It's some kind of yeah, like yeah, yeah. Did Did you hear the newest one? Nah, I came out last anymore. year. Yeah, there's another one that came out last year. It's I I don't really think you would like it then if you don't really like Skin Lab. It kind of goes back to that era, uh, but it has the new metal focus parts in it. You know what I mean? There's I'm it's picky. just. Yeah, yeah, I'm starting to notice that. <laughs> like, My you like a lot of bands that, like, I don't, or a lot of records that I don't. Which, I don't which do it purposely. Weird. A lot of people think, like, I do it to be against the grain. It's just what I like to hear. I can't help it. It's like, I'm oh, not, no, no. It's, like, the only reason why I shit on Death Punk is I know it gets under people's skin. They're the kind of fans <laughs> and they can't handle when someone doesn't like them. No, so, listen. They're uh, they're my favorite band of all time, but you're not going to get under my skin about it. That's I just think I'll like, never online, let that online, happen. Like, I, and I don't like Slayer, so those are my the two bands I use against people. Like Slayer sucks, Deftones sucks, and they can't handle it. They just I can't stand. Cast. I can't stand Slayer. So, I uh, I like <laughs> Slayer's God <laughs> hates us all and Diablos, but I don't. I remember I, there was a fuck Rain and Blood. I don't care. There, were, I remember <sighs> there was like uh, some beef between um, Kerry King and Rob Flynn because. Uh, Rob Flynn was like doing the whole new metal thing, but then not, like Rob Flynn snapped back and said, "Well, you were in a Sum Forty One video, so fuck off or something like that." It was really, <laughs> yeah, that's totally cool. random. I just thought it was fucking funny. That's all. Yeah, like like I don't really care for Slayer at all, and people hate or like, oh, what, what? Like, how do you not like them? They're they're the Godfathers of metal. No, they're not. I can't handle it. I think it's hilarious. Uh, they would, they there some, would be metal without Slayer. Stop they the had fucking some, nonsense. They had some good albums, but I mean, it's. One of those things where it's better to burn out than fade away. Is is it better to burn out or fade away? I think burn out is easier, right? Just call it a day. Just say, you know what, we're just not doing this anymore. We're we're into different things. And yeah. when they just keep, you know, keep trying to to persevere, and it's like when you're on like your sixth lineup change, like Rob Flynn and Machine Head, right now he's got a whole new band. It's like, yeah. dude, do something new. 
just do yeah, something. Just, just, had you're, problem stop was, tarnishing like, your reputation, man. Yeah. The problem was like they would try to do what's ever popular in metal. So like, yeah, you know, they kind of go through. That's why I think I didn't like a couple of those albums between you know Ashes of Empires and Catharsis because. I mean, they won a then they won a Grammy for one of those albums though, or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So I guess I, so. Like, I can't take that away from them, but like, I just want to hear new metal machine head. So like. <laughs> so so let's get into Supercharger. Why exactly do you love that record? I I think it's hot garbage, man. <laughs> you know, I think at first when it dropped, I didn't like it, but like when I revisit it now, because I I own it, I have it somewhere in the pile of my new metal CDs right here. Um, I don't know, man. I think. I think what it is is just like it's one of those records I can just put on and not think about. Like you don't have to think about shit. You just okay. put it on and listen. Um, I I will say though on Burning Red, I think one of the best songs ever made is Silver. I fucking love that song. My favorite CD, my favorite song off that album is Exile the Vile. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Exhale the Vile, I think it's called. But like, yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. That that. That's a that is a great record, but I feel like when he went to Supercharger, I think he tried too hard. Well, he a thousand percent. That was the corniest new metal album ever. But I feel like <laughs> oh, it's there. it's hot garbage. All I, I can hear, all I can hear my head is ah yeah, <laughs> yeah I, dude. I love when people mock my my taste in music because I'm like, yeah, you're right, it's corny, but I love it. I don't care, dude. I get mocked so fucking much. It's I don't care though. Like yeah. at the end of the day, if you want to hear Rain and Blood 48 times in a row. Be my fucking guest, but yeah. that shit, nah, I'm good. Man. <laughs> it's like when people are like, "Oh, you like Pantera, but you don't like uh, Slayer." Yeah, I I like Pantera. You know why? Because they're that is some of the hardest grooving shit you ever hear in your life. Yeah, I don't like fucking... either band, but I'm not gonna yeah, yeah, no. care. No, that's fine. And and then a lot of people bring up the you know Phil's a racist thing. Well, but I'm not looking at that. I'm listening to the music. Yeah, I'm the same way. Yeah, you know it, there I mean? it is. It, it is definitely possible in a lot of cases to separate the art from the artist absolutely because there are some people that let's be honest here even some of the bands that we've talked about that we love i guarantee you a couple of those uh uh, more than a handful of those people have skeletons in their closet that if we knew we'd be like "Ooh, i can't believe i'm really a lot of the bands i listen to have done shitty things yeah yeah, it it happens yeah human beings i don't agree with it but what am i about it yeah exactly 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 you know, and I, mean, I wish more people were like you in that regard where they they thought of that, you know, because it's just the it's time like, you live in. It's just the time. It's, 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 yeah. It's, and the other the other side of that is, you know, art is a art is a um art is a uh, symptom of the of the time it was created, right? It's a product of its yeah. environment. So like when people get mad at the guy from Glassjaw for misogynist lyrics off the first album, well, he was fucking 17 and just got dumped by his girlfriend. Of course he's going to be pissed off. And that makes sense. And anybody who's ever been dumped can go, okay, yeah, I fucking get it. I get being mad about that. Now, do I think he needs to disavow all those? No. Because all you need to say is, I was 17. I got dumped for my girlfriend. What do, you, what do you want from me? That's what I was going through at the time. You know? I mean. People trying yeah, to yeah. cancel dead people nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. Dude, he's so, dead. You can't cancel him. Fucking George right Washington, that racist. Yeah. 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 God, <laughs> God canceled them already. You're too you know what? Yeah. You know what? Burn all your one dollar bills. <laughs> all right, bro. All right, so so let's get into the things that are gonna make you think. And we like to put people in the spot. Hey, I do this on Ill Street News every fucking episode now because I like when people go, oh shit. And I want to have that all shit moment with you. And I know Jay asked you your top five festival shows and all that stuff, which is a great question. I love when he asked that. But here's mine. What is your top five new metal bands and what is your top five new metal records? Cool. And you there know, my, it goes. My uh, taste always, like, it depends on, like, the, the month, which would be my favorite new metal band or band in general. Like, I, honestly, my favorite band of all time is not even a new metal band. It's Everclear. Like I grew up on Everclear, okay. still love okay. them. So um, uh, amazing songwriting, like you can't short yeah. that. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, so for new metal, I will definitely say for one because it highly influenced me in my life was the Burning Red, My Machine Head. Okay. Um, uh, no one self-titled. I really like that. Um, okay. Spine Shank, Height of 
Chaos Net. Great record. Uh, okay. I would say now, now it's getting harder because now I feel like anything I say is just going to be thrown in there just to, to, you know, get the top five. But I think, you know, top, the fourth and the fifth place would change constantly. You know what it I mean? It does for me as well. Yeah. But like right now, it probably would be. Um, what album is that? Follow the Leader by Corn. I've been listening to that one a lot lately. Great record. Okay. Yeah. And um, fuck, man. Uh, it, it's crazy talking to Chris, like, who, who's 37, and he says Follow the Leader is his, you know, a, one of his favorite corn it's, records. It's, that's why I love these conversations. I, I, know, generational, I, I know. Generationally, right? Like, it's a totally different outlook. Yep. And um, I like that. You know what I mean? It, it, it mean. The smart answer, not the smart answer, but the usual answer is, oh, you know, the self-titled. But he yeah. goes and says, I came into the band on Paradigm Shift. And it's just like, me and Jay go, holy shit, what? Yeah, I mean, uh, Chris, I mean, we were, I had to cancel the episode because I had something come up in my personal life. But Tim and I were going to sit down with Adam from Orthodox and Matt from Boundaries to talk about the third Slipknot album, which they swear is the best Slipknot album. And when they both said that, I was like, what? what? Yeah, what? But uh, what? Let me tell you something. When I got into metal, I hated Corn and Slipknot only because they were that popular. Like I had that mindset. When bands were so popular, it ruined it for me. So I never listened to Corn. Never gave them a chance. I Fucking never gave, hardcore kids, man. I never gave Corn and <laughs> Slipknot a chance until about two to three years ago, and I regret it. Like I had to play yeah. techno. Yeah. So so all right. So well, here's a good thing then. So three years ago, you hear the self-titled Slipknot record. Are you blown away? I wouldn't say blown away. Actually, the CD that got me into Slipknot was. Uh, um, Don't you fucking dare say what I think you're going to say. <laughs> Don't you do it. The first Slipknot <laughs> album I bought was the newest one. Okay. I, never mind. I thought you were going to say something else. What do you think he was going to say, Tim? Volume if, if, five or whatever? If he said we're, we're, we're not. Or, what the hell is that record before uh, the newest one? Oh, the that, one with Cycle Social on it? Yeah, that's, yeah, that is a terrible record. <laughs> I, I like that record too, but like, no, I would say like I actually just got my hands on the first few Slipknot albums, and the first one is the first album is flawless, like yeah. it really is. But like, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like I was down from the start, like yeah, and, and that's what and that's what I like about you. Yeah, yeah, just admit it, like ah, not my thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I, that's what I like about you. I mean, like, how about Iowa? Because that's a fucking banger. I really do like the album. It took me actually that was my least favorite for a long time, but like I've been listening to I've been listening to that one more and more and more. I'm like, nah, the CD's really good. It just took a while to yeah. grow on me. Yeah, yeah. What what do you think like when you went back and heard uh Life is Peachy? That one I did not like when I bought it. Like when I was listening to it, I was like, uh but now like when when I listened to it like I that had to grow on me too, you know. <clears throat> Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, a lot of people that. say that as well. Yeah. Um, corn has so many freaking. The only corn album I won't fuck with is the one where it's all like electronic. Like, oh, I hate stuff that with shit. Skrillex. Like, I skipped yeah, that. Yeah. I oh, was that that, that chop well. screwed and whatever. Yeah, I don't know. It's did. like an actual record they put out. I forget what I know. What you're talking about though. Um, you'd have to look it up. Exist. Yeah, I pretend that one doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah, that that's how that's what I do with machine head. I pretend a supercharger never exists. So. <laughs> More for me. Yeah, yeah, there you go. You know what? There's probably Best Buy probably still has ten of them sitting on their shelf because no one's bought it. <laughs> you know? But yeah, it, I don't know. Like to put to put a just to put a band on the fit. Like I don't, I think that's unfair to me. Like just like to like I'm just gonna say something for the sake of saying something. You know, I don't want to do that. No, 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 absolutely. And like I said, that's what I like about you. Um, all right, so let's do this. Worst new metal bands. Like, who are the bands that you put on and you're, or you hear and you're just like, ugh. All right. Uh, well, we know I don't like Death Tones. Yeah. So that's on, I'm not going to bring that up. Um, trying to think. There was this band I used to listen to. Uh, you know, I listened to, I, I actually watched a couple of your guys' um, uh, podcast before on youtube before you know i was gonna come on but like i i know you guys are talking about the band ultra Stank. yeah i used to I love, fucking that love that album i used to love them but i tried listening to them 
like a couple months ago again because like i said i'm i got rid of all my new metal cities so i'm slowly getting my collection back and like re-listening to a lot of these bands and i just think they're horrible <laughs> i can't do it <laughs> The yeah, second album, second album is terrible. I still love the first one. Maybe it's the second album I'm listening to, because I don't know which is which. I know nothing about them other than they're all the the, the yeah. self titled is the first one. The second one is Progress. It has the rat with the ear on the back on the cover. That's, that's the, the second, one. Oh, is that yeah. the second one? That's the second one. That's the one I owned, and that's the one I tried listening to again Mm-mm. recently. And I was like, this fucking sucks. No, I'm gonna go in. Good. I'm gonna listen to that this week again. But the second one or the first one? I'll, I'll listen to both of them, actually. The first one, is, it's, it holds up well. The second one is... Um, for worse new metal, you know, there's a lot of... The new metal was kind of on its way out. A lot of bands came out, and they were just, like, horrible. Like, then the, you get into, like, the whole rap rock side of new metal, and a lot of those bands are really fucking bad. Um, some come out, and they're real good, but, like... I mean, I love Third Strike. I'm not gonna sit here and lie. Yeah, that yeah. That they they put out some decent stuff. Do do you like now? See, what really pisses me off nowadays is people lump Rage Against the Machine into new metal, mm-hmm. and they're not a new I metal band they were at all. New metal though, even never, when I was, no. Even back then, like I never. They're got not a new metal band. band. No. no, nope, nope, nope. I just never understood why people say they're a new metal band. I don't it's know like, what, what I would tell them, but I, that they never like that never. <laughs> yeah, I would say, what are you, an idiot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I don't, like hey, they're not. Here's another hot take because I'm full, I'm full of them, but I don't like Rage Against Machine either. I, I, Rage Against Machine is very much one of those bands. It's a love them or hate them band. Either people love them or people hate them. I think the first two albums are great. I as well. I do too. The but third, after it's for yeah, I'm I'm good with after that. I mean, Battle for Los Angeles was just okay, but at that point, I mean, they kind of they kind of started to get high in the smell of their own farts. And it became like too self-referential and recursive for me. Just yeah. not. It wasn't even like the context lyrically because I know they're like anti-government and all that. That's perfectly. That's perfectly fine. I mean, the world's a fucked up place. It's just musically, I didn't like. I didn't care less about it. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. It's and a lot, and I feel a lot of people base their opinion yeah. on that shit, and it's just stupid. Like, look, look at it after you like, know them supporting whatever they do. Like, like you said, I don't care what they fucking support. Whatever. Yeah. Like, it's kind of have... like the whole who who's your president debate, which is fucking stupid. It's like who cares? Yeah. If I don't <laughs> have to hear that quicky quicky thing, guitar thing he does one more time, I'd yeah, yeah, up. yeah. Like yo, like he, he pulls his wrench out of his back pocket and scrapes the strings with it. Okay, yeah. cool, whatever. Like, you're dude. real inventive, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right now, now here's here's a band that I'm gonna guess that you hate. Okay, try me. Seven Dust. <laughs> Okay. That's All my right, favorite Seven go. Dust album. But I, the funny thing about Seven Dust is I love them and hate them at the same time. Now, this is what I mean. A lot of their CDs are really fucking good front to back, but they put out some CDs that are horrible from front to back. So, like, yeah. there's like three to four full CDs I can't stand. Which ones are they? I don't even like. Do you like the first one? Ones. I love the first one. I'll Do tell you, you like what home? I love. What's that? Do you like Home? Yep, I like that's a, that's their best record. Home, the first one. I like Black Out the Sun. Uh, yeah. I love Seasons, and I like Chapter Seven, Hope and okay. Sorrow, and I like their album called Next. Yep. Any of the other albums, fucking suck. Yeah, you know, you know what? I would probably agree with that a hundred percent. There's some of their albums are this. I shit. think their problem is the definitely the last like two to three albums. They're putting out an album every year. Like why? Like you yeah, can't take your time. Slow down, the slow down and make make quality. Yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. Slow down and I understand like, like what you're doing, but slow down and get the quality out. Then quality. No I, I'm more quality, you know. Yeah, no, no disrespect to bands like Amir and like the Case Train, but they do the same thing. It's like, how can you? How can this be good? It's, 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 I mean, you know, yeah. it's, mm-hmm. I mean, those kind of bands can fart on a snare drum and anyone listens to them, but it doesn't make sense to me. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. like, oh, dude, that's so brutal. It's like, nah, it's really just. <laughs> I came across somebody on Twitter. I think it was Twitter. Their screen name was the Focaccia Strain. And I said, that is a brilliant fucking web handle. Like, those are the kind of things I wish I came up with because I thought it was great. Uh, there's too much music these days. You don't need to do an album in a year. You don't. You kill it. You, 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 it's oversaturated. It's not quantity anymore. It's quality. I think it hurts you when you put out too much. 
You yeah. need um, to have you need to have people want you. It, it de- I, I think it you don't depends. want to be the afterthought, you know. Yeah, it depends on the band and it depends on the music you're playing. And the example I'll like, give is, like, yeah, um, like Thou or yeah. The Body. They put out stuff nonstop, and it's collaborations, it, it's remixes, it's hey, I you know I got Chris from you know Forgiveness Denied in the studio. We did some weird fucking instrumental fucking drone shit, you know, like that works. Because they're just trying new and different things. If they put out the out like the same sound as their album five, ten times a year, you'd be like, dude, what the fuck? These guys are terrible. Like, stop. Yeah. Stop. yeah. Like, why didn't you just put it on one record? Right, right. What were you saying, Chris? I cut you off. I don't remember now. It wasn't important, <laughs> apparently, though. There, there's it's probably another hot take. Hey, I, I, we love hot takes on New Breed here. There, so there's another band I want to ask you about, and this is another band that I think gets thrown under the radar is 36 Crazy Fists. Ooh, love it. The first two albums. Anything past that, I'm not into it. Like, wow, okay. Right. Actually, uh, yeah. sorry, the third one was okay too, but anything past that, I never fucked with it. Wow. I, I think they're a very, very slept-on band, and I think a lot uh, of people would be very surprised. Yeah, I got, the, I got the CDs here. Some, oh, yeah, well, here's, uh, it's his vocals that throw everybody off. Yeah, I love that record. That's this a is great my favorite record, record by them. That's uh, a great record, man. They actually, I actually saw them with Machine Head. So Jeez. Yeah, was, they toured, uh, I think it was around Supercharger era. No, actually, because this is the last new metal show I went to. It was going to be, it was 36, Machine Head, and Arch, I know you were supposed to play, but Arch, I don't mean drop the, the show. And, How long uh, ago was this? Oh, uh, man. I want to see 2004, 2005. This is this was this was on the cusp of my transaction from my transition from new metal to a hardcore kid. So when okay. I went to that show, I had a chip on my shoulder. Like I didn't enjoy my show, and I like that's the one show I regret because like I stood there in the back with my arms crossed, like I'm better than these new metal nerds, you know. And like <laughs> I wish because I love 36, I love Machine Head, and I I wish I didn't have that mindset. Like I wasn't having a good time just because I thought I was above it all. It's like when the new metal kid came near you at your arms, you were just like, get away. Dude, and then yeah. that's when I started like being like, oh, these mother- push pits are for pussies. Like that kind of mentality. Like, yeah. you know, so like, I'm better than these new metal nerds. That's going on a t-shirt. It's <laughs> definitely going on a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> and I'm a huge new metal nerd. So it's like, no, right on it. it yeah, it's, it's, so, so my, my one last my one couple last things here is, well, why do you think that there's so many like closeted new metal fans? And I know I, we I, talked about this briefly, but like, let's get more into it. Like, right, like new metal is the redheaded stepchild of the metal scene, and a lot okay. of metal elite uh. cannot stand it. Um, you'll see on like message boards, like people that shit on new metal, like. It's like me. It's like when I had the "I'm holier than thou" kind of attitude. Like that's what people have. Like, new metal is the kid you lock in the basement for, you know, because he's fucking ugly or something. I don't know. New metal is like the coronavirus. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That's, that's a hot take, but interesting. Okay. Well, no, to, to it's, people, it's like the it's like the coronavirus. Like you don't want to be, you don't want to get it, but eventually you're gonna have to hear it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, a new metal to me it's definitely it's funny because like when you're a fan like a real fan of new metal and like you love more than just the the, the surface bands and all like the big bands like corn and slipknot and you're like you're like into it like it sounds like all three of us are like you know you go down the new metal rabbit hole that like you love it and like it's hard to explain but like you either love it or you hate it or you pretend to hate it and you really do love it. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And my, my last thing is because I hate System of a Down, what do you think of them? Uh, they suck. Thank I can't you. Stand them. They're fucking terrible. Nope, they're bad. I'm tired of that stupid ass fucking vocal thing he does. I hate it. Get away from me with that garbage. No one cares that he left something on the nightstand or whatever the fuck he says. Yeah, get away from me with that garbage. If I never had to hear it again, I'd, it'd be too fucking... <laughs> What's that, what's that saying? I don't really like to talk down on bands 
So like when I say that kind of stuff, I'm just kidding. But yeah, I'm not. I'm not a fan. It's just not your thing. It's cool. It's just yeah. not. It's not your fucking thing. I'm not yeah, gonna it's... give shit to anyone for listening to them. You know, I am. Just, <laughs> yeah. They're terrible. If you say that, yeah, but three, that's go in your bathroom. Not... Turn the lights out, like, light a candle, and say "System of a Down sucks" five times. Adam Easterling shows up in your bathroom and punches you in the face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fucking awesome. Yeah, Adam no, of a I, Down I, comes and gets you. It just punches you right in the face. It's funny because yeah. System of a Down is another one of those bands when you talk to a lot of hardcore fans, they're like, "Oh my god, this band rules!" And I was like, "What? Yeah, what?" Uh, they're musically talented, but it it's a very it's a the first album is the epitome of new metal. I, I just think by the last album, they just, they, they weren't into it and you could kind of tell. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like the two new songs they put out. Uh, I actually like those, um, but it's not too far off from what was it? Mesmerized was the first one of that, of that duo, which I thought wasn't bad. Maybe they're just too chaotic for me. Like I feel could like be. the song structures weren't as simple as I would like. Could be, could be. What else you got, Tim? I'm, I'm, I'm good, man. Yeah, I, I'm, I am out of questions. Yeah, I, 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 pr- I pretty much think we covered it all, and and dude, we're two hours almost. Yeah, I, it Jesus. fucking flew, dude. Yeah, that was a really, that was a, that was a fast, uh, fast two hours. I'll tell you that much. Absolutely. So, so, tell everybody what you know where they can find your bands and all you know and oh 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 let's talk about this you guys in before i had wings just put out was it a new ep uh we put out a new we just dropped a new song online oh it's just a song okay yeah because we're we're not releasing at full length until next year because we didn't want to release okay. something during the pandemic yeah 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 well, let's get into the bands real quick and then we'll, we'll get out of here i know i know it's getting late and you know all that stuff but let's get into before i had wings and stuff and all that like you know, yeah. tell people what they can expect when they're listening to it. Because a lot of people listening to New Breed are new, are hardcore and metal fans mm-hmm. and stuff. So they'll appreciate, you know, what you're doing. Well, um, before our wings, like, we call ourselves, like, a mosh band. Because we're heavily influenced by, like, the heavy hardcore, the mosh side of heavy hardcore. And we get lumped in with, like, the beatdown scene a lot. Like, we're friends with a lot of the beatdown bands. And we play with a lot of the beatdown shows. Um, when you listen to us, it's pretty simplistic. It's like... We write two step breakdowns and fast parts, and that's it. And like, yeah, I just sing tough guy shit over it. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's that simple. You don't have to think about anything. I mean, the newest song we put out, um, it, it the song's about my disdain for like cancel culture. So, I mean, I not it. every, not every, you know, song might have like uh, a message like that. You know, some are just, you know, your normal tough guy, you fuck with me, I'm gonna beat you up kind of thing. But uh, uh, you know, and, and dude, and, and I heard the new song, and I fucking love the direction of it, and I feel the same exact way. I think that shit is fucking played out, and I think it ruins a lot of things. It's mm-hmm, mm-hmm. don't get me wrong, people saying like homophobic shit like that, yeah, it's fucked up. I think there's like, I think things, I think people, just little things, people will call like racist or homophobic when it's really not. It might yeah. just be a misunderstanding and stuff like that. But then when you go online and like you're fucking posting people's jobs and you're posting people's family members, yeah. like these people have kids and you're going and you're posting their home address. Yes. Stuff like that. Like, who, like you think you're, you're above this person because yes. you're, you know, like you're no better. It, exactly. That's what the about. That is what, the fucking yeah. shit that I what, hate. What kind of, what kind of sorry person? in their life gets enjoyment out of ruining someone else's. I see people yeah. do it online that are, like, are on my friends list. Like, I don't know them. They must have just added me because they like my bands or we have something in common. But they do it constantly. And, like, I wanted to call them out. But, like, I like to, I don't like to call people out on the internet. I think that's corny. Just like these yeah, cancer yeah. culture people are doing. But, like, um, so I do it in through my music. Dude, there, there was two years ago, and I'll tell this story real quick. Two years ago, I worked with this dude who he went online. He disagreed with someone about one of these sore subjects that people get mad about. He happened to have his employer, which I, you know, I work for on his Facebook page. They screenshot at the stuff, sent it to corporate and he got fucking written up for it. And that shit right there infuriates mm-hmm. me. Like, listen, you might disagree with the dude's views, but don't get him fucking fired. That shit is yeah. fucking out of control. I mean, everybody... Everybody, des- everybody deserves the right to make a mistake and to atone yes. for it. 
That's right? A, How's that? Just if you don't like what he said, go beat him up. That's like, why do you have yeah. to get, get him fired? <laughs> yeah, be like, real with it. You want to talk shit? Be yeah, real yeah. with it. Don't don't be no closet. You know, don't be no closet keyboard warrior. Before the internet, that's all you could do. Yeah. 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 Exactly. You had a beef with someone, you go and beat their ass. You don't have to go and screenshot their employer like a little pussy. That shit yeah. drives me nuts, man. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. And like, and like you said earlier, there's people that have so many skeletons and they fucking hide behind the I'm all almighty bullshit. It's nah, dude. Nope. I had enough of it. And that's another reason I hate hardcore because everyone thinks that they're fucking Mr. PC and fuck off. It wasn't I wasn't always it. like that. Wasn't no, it, it, no, it, yeah, no. but it's not about the music anymore. It's about who you know and who you blow and all that it's, shit. It's all about um, it's clout, it's clout, and it's and it's yeah. um um uh, virtue signaling. It's it's yes. not it's pe- one person trying to prove they're better than another person. Ah, whatever. I, we can, I can't yeah. ignore that shit, and I just play my music, and people yep each other right? up in their yep. shows, and I'm happy. Yeah, yep. see, I I get real pissed off about that shit. So it's like <laughs> it's kind it's of bother me because you know what. Him, we can't do nothing about it. They're going to be that way no matter what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're 100 percent correct, man. It's I shouldn't even get mad at it, but when it do, like I said, when it comes to ruining people's lives, like Jay said, I don't fucking like that shit. Yeah, man. it's just that's it's uncalled for. Because you get if you get me fired from my job because I I disagree with you about something, I hope you have a bulletproof vest. I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, ah, fuck yeah. that. All right, uh, what else have we got, Tim? Dude. That that's dude, great conversation, man. Yeah, great to yeah. have you on, dude. Yeah, so um, I guess I will take us home. So we will put links to all of Chris's bands in the Absolutely. show notes. Um, please check them out. Uh, if you're listening and you agree with what we said, you disagree, you think Chris is right and no one is great, you think Chris is wrong and the Deftones are fantastic, just drop us an email. Go on one of our social media. Let us know. Um, we, we're always looking for uh, more conversation. You can find us on Instagram. I believe it is New Breed Podcast. You can New find Breed us on underscore podcast. New Breed underscore podcast. And that's the same for Twitter. Yes, Tim? Or is it all yes, one sir. Yes. Yep, same. Uh, email is newbreedpodcast at gmail.com. Um, you can find us on Spotify and all these other uh, – Spotify, Audible. I, I believe I started uploading episodes to um, X Hamster, so you can listen to us there if you're really interested. <laughs> um, but I, once again, uh, on behalf of Tim and myself, I want to thank Chris for taking the time out of his night to come talk to us. On behalf of Chris, Tim, and myself, I want to thank all of you listeners for listening. Um, until next time, this is the New Breed Podcast signing out. Cheers. Thanks for listening.